stop right there. If you want a relationship, if you're dating or entertaining the idea of starting to date, this is a video you need to watch. So many people see red flag, overlook red flag. See red flag, or they're not good for you. And it gets frustrating. And you're like, why do I keep meeting the wrong person? But I want you to know you are not doomed to this outcome. There are things you can do to avoid this happening. As a coach, I have sat down with thousands of people one-on-one -on -one, hearing all kinds of stories. And it's so unfortunate to hear people get put through the ringer and have to deal with these toxic situations because what's horrible or even more horrible about it is that one toxic situation that you go through can turn into three, four, five more, a cycle of it because now there's a level of brokenness and a, a need to heal that a lot of people don't engage in and simply jump into a new relationship only to wreak more havoc. So now you not only are the victim of it, but you actually end up being the person who's now hurting other individuals. But again, today is about you avoid it happening to you. So let's start with tip number one on how to avoid getting played. Address all red flags. Listen, I don't care if the flag is blue, purple, like if it, if it looks kind of red, any flag, address it. One of the big mistakes people make in dating and relationships is this fear of speaking on the issues that they see or this fear of digging into it, maybe because you're afraid of what you're going to find out. But one way or another, that's the setup to getting played. That's the setup to you ending up in disappointment in this situation or relationship because you're seeing the issue, you're seeing this red flag, but you got to talk about it. You've got to see if this individual is actually going to correct the issue or if it's a correctable issue or if it's simply a clear sign you do not need to move forward with this individual. Now, let me make this very clear if you haven't caught on already. This is for men and women, all right? This ain't just what women go through. This is for men too. This is for everyone to avoid getting played. So both men and women, you have to address the red flags. Now, listen, here's a caveat to this. It doesn't mean attack somebody because you see a red flag. It doesn't mean speak negatively to them or project a negative outcome from that conversation. It means to have a very calm, loving, open conversation about any concerns that you have, any issues that you see, and you're doing it with the goal of gaining a better understanding and seeing if it can be corrected or if it's a, a situation that needs to be corrected in the first place because sometimes a red flag is just a misunderstanding. So you're going in for that reason. You're, you're taking that action, trying to achieve those results. And again, if at the end all you do is gain clarity that they're not for you, so be it. But you got to address it. So do not hold back. Always talk about everything because that's how you're going to avoid creating a bigger mess. Tip number two to avoid getting played, be honest about your needs and desires. So again, in dating and even relationships, hell, even in marriage, so many people do not openly and fully express their needs, desires, and, and hell, what their standards are in that relationship. And so now that becomes very easy or it becomes very easy to get caught up in this ongoing lackadaisical, mediocre relationship because you have not made it clear what you needed. Now, the fact that your needs are not being fulfilled in that situation is not an automatic sign of they're a horrible person, they're not for you, or they're playing you because some people want to love you but don't know how to. They don't know how you want to receive the love. They don't know what exactly you're looking for. Now, you may have the mentality of, well, they're a grown adult. They should know better. But you can't do that. We're all raised differently. We come from different experiences. And some people may not have the knowledge and wisdom already to know how to properly pour into you. You are a very unique, specific individual. They have to learn you. Now, yes, they should be proactive in that. 
but you should also be proactive in providing the information because now you're going to be able to see a lot clearer if they're playing games or if they're serious because I always say one of the clearest ways to see if someone's serious about you is to let them know how you feel and see how they handle that all right because someone who's not serious about you will deflect make excuses di dismiss you devalue your needs and desires but the person who actually cares about you, who's actually trying to have a real relationship with you, is going to look for ways to, to address those things, look for ways to correct them, to pour into you in the ways that you're asking for. You know, of course, some things might be a little foreign to some individuals, so it may be hard for them to grasp, but there's still a more active desire to want to make you happy. And so it's hard to see that when you're not letting them know what you need. You can't let them freestyle the relationship. You won't expose a liar with, with lies. And I say with lies because if you're holding back and you're not being honest, then in essence you are lying. So you cannot drive out their deception. You cannot expose where they truly stand. You have to bring truth to the situation. You have to bring honesty and openness, which then forces them to have to step up to the plate or get the hell on. It's Plain and simple. So do not hold back. Be honest and open about your needs, desires, and the standards that you want to set in a relationship. Tip number three, never be afraid to ask questions. So this kind of goes hand in hand with addressing the red flags, but it goes deeper than that. Because every question we want to ask isn't about a red flag. It may be curiosity as to where do we stand? Where's this relationship going? What are your true intentions? A lot of people get caught up and get played because they don't hold that person accountable to answering the questions and providing clarity to let you know where do you stand in this relationship? What are the intentions in this relationship? And again, any other questions that you have. Do you want kids one day? Hell, I've seen people go through dating afraid to ask the kid, the kid question when it's very important to them only to end up six months later, finally it comes out and you find out they don't want any kids. And now you feel stuck, you don't know what to do. Now in that scenario, it wasn't them playing you, but you still feel like your time got wasted. And now you're caught up in an unhealthy attachment that can become much more difficult to walk away from. I've literally seen situations where a woman who really, I, I wanna use the word desperately wanted a child because she was a, a, over the age of 40, got caught up in a situation with a man who did not and it ended up dragging on for like two three years which only hindered her ability to have the child she wanted so it's very dangerous to not speak on our feelings to not ask questions and again as i mentioned in tip number two you don't drive out of uh, lies with more lies you have to bring truth you have to be willing to ask and talk about all the things that are concerning you or are on your mind there's nothing wrong with that. And if you're concerned with, well, I don't want to scare them away, I don't want to overwhelm them, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So it's not the question that you're asking that's a problem, it's how you're asking it. If you're coming to the table in a very loving, open, calm, positive manner, then there's no reason that someone who's serious about you is going to take issue with that. If they take issue with you taking that proper approach, that is exposing the fact that they're not serious or they're not ready and mature enough to have a healthy relationship with you. Either way, they need to go. Tip number four, huge tip, huge tip number four to avoid getting played. Set a deadline. Now, this one might be a little unpopular for some people. They, you might be raising your eyebrows. Like, what do you mean set a deadline? Listen. We gotta stop playing games. If we're trying to avoid getting played, then let's not play games ourselves. The reality is that too many people go willy-nilly into these situations with no deadline or no, no vision of, okay, where do we now set the marker of, are we now taking a further step in this relationship or are we decide this isn't gonna work? How are we deciding that when is enough enough, all right? You can't just let it drag on, again, I have seen people get dragged on for two, two months, not, not two months, two months is short, two years, five years, 10 years, 
And, and, it, and it was just a, a horrible relationship that didn't actually go anywhere. They just got dragged along the whole time because, again, there was never a deadline. There was never a set standard to listen. If we've been in a romantic relationship, for, and this is just an example, let's say two years, and you still don't know if you want to marry me, or we don't know if we want to move forward with each other, then at that point, we need to make a decision. Now, some of you may say, well, two years is too soon. Well, listen, you can set the deadline you're comfortable with, but let me make something very clear. It doesn't take that long to figure out who you want to share your life with, all right? Outside of special situations where, let's say, two people are very young and they, they still haven't established themselves, that might be an exception to the rule. But if we're talking two grown adults, all right, two individuals who, who lived a little bit of life here, the reality is that you don't need forever to figure this out. In most situations, when it takes that long, it's because you haven't fallen in love with them. You're just learning to tolerate them. You become attached to them. You are holding on because of the investment you made in the relationship. And yes, this can happen to both men and women. But people who have experienced a connection with each other, they didn't need two, three years to determine this is who I want to marry. So again, why do you need to have that much time or give them that much time? Let me give you another perspective to consider. If you went to work at an internship for six months, they didn't pay you. And after six months, it was supposed to be a decision to now hire you or let you go. They say to you, well, listen, we love you as an employee. We think you are awesome. We want you to keep working for us, but we're not prepared to hire you yet. Let's just keep this going and see where this, where this goes. <laughs> all right? The majority of you, if not all of you, are not going to continue to work at that internship. You're going to say, oh, hell no. I already showed you the employee I am. You know what I bring to the table. You either want to hire me or you don't. Guess what? It's the same thing in relationships. I've shown you who I am. I've brought my best to the table. I've been open and honest. At this point, you either want this or you don't. And if you don't, cool, we go our separate ways. Or maybe it's a situation where even if you want to say you're simply not ready, why do I or you have to remain in the relationship, giving them the benefits of, of you and the benefits of being with you when they cannot decide on their intentions with you? That doesn't make any sense. And you're not incentivizing them to make a decision. You're actually helping them drag things along. So I, I don't want to drag out this point, but the bottom line is, yes, set a deadline. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with you saying to yourself, listen, I'm giving this relationship X amount of years, and if we cannot decide to move forward, we move on. And we keep it simple. And that's how we avoid getting played. And now last but not least, tip number five on how to avoid getting played. Well, real quick, let me do a quick plug, all right? Get my book, Love After Heartbreak. I put a link in the description, the link in the comment section. It will tell you the steps to heal, all right, and to really experience peace, happiness, and joy in your life. It's extremely important that we go through the healing process. And so this book will lay it out for you. It is for men and for women. People are already having their lives transformed by it. You can see the reviews on Amazon for yourself. This is a legitimate book that is going to help you. So again, Love After Heartbreak, click the link in the description or in the comment section. Now, tip number five is actually you need to heal. So I plugged the book in before just to lead into this, but healing is a huge piece of the puzzle if you want to avoid getting played. And the reason is because when you have not healed, you're essentially trying to see this world through broken glasses. All right. You can't see straight. You can't see clearly. And hell, you may not even be able to think clearly because you're holding on to so much hurt and trauma. This will almost inevitably lead you into the wrong relationships. It will cause you to entertain individuals that don't belong in your life. It will also add to you developing more unhealthy attachments and continuing the toxic cycle that you've already previously experienced. So it is important to heal because when you heal, you see through the BS quicker. You're able to love yourself enough to not entertain someone who does not belong in your life. You're able to conquer the fear of being alone, conquer the fear of, of, uh, of, of my time or my clock is running, whatever fears you have, all right? You'll be able to overcome that because you will have a heal 
whole heart that will strengthen you to make sure you make better decisions and you end up in the right relationship. So if you want to avoid getting played, you need to heal. And again, get your copy of Love After Heart. Now again, as I said in the very beginning, so many people see red flag, overlook red flag. See red flag, rationalize past red flag. See red flag, it makes all kinds of excuses for the red flag. And unfortunately, it's that process of not addressing it that causes people to end up in the wrong relationship, waste years with this individual that they never belonged with, only to end up back at square one, but with more damage, all right? and having to go through this process again, but hindered by the lack of healing they're now experiencing due to past experiences. Now, with all that said, we've gotta break that cycle. We, we've gotta stop this overlooking of red flags. Now, let me make something very clear. If you've been watching me, then you know I am not a believer in the minute you see a red flag, you run, you cut them off. That's not how we do things. You see a red flag and you properly effectively address the red flag. And then if it's not corrected, now we cut them off. Now we let them go unapologetically, we move on because we did our part and we gave them the opportunity to correct the issue, all right? But again, we must address it. So I'm gonna give you seven. There's a lot more than seven we could talk about and that's why I want you to comment below. But I'm gonna give you seven that came to mind uh, that I wanted to mention in this video uh, and Again, let's just see where it goes. Let's see what else you can add to the list. So number one, and it's in no particular order, number one red flag is they never take any personal accountability. You have to pay very close attention to people. Now, this can be difficult because depending on the conversations being had, depending on the situations that arise, there may not always be a, a quick opportunity to see if this person can own when they make a mistake. But typically, somewhere in the dating process, there will be a moment where an individual, even yourself, makes a mistake or mishandles the situation, and here is their chance to now take ownership. And if you notice that they never take ownership, that is a huge red flag. But not just in the situations that occur with you and them. Also, when they talk about their past situations or things going on in their life, if every situation is framed with them being the victim and everyone else being the villain that, that came against them, that's a problem. Now, listen, I'm not saying that there aren't some situations where, yes, they were genuinely the victim, just as you may be. But in most cases, there's something that we could recognize that we could do better in that situation. And it's important that you identify if this individual is capable of doing that. Now, again, I repeat, if you notice they don't take accountability, you point it out. You discuss it with them. And you also make sure that you show a willingness to take accountability on your end because you can't be the same person blaming everyone else, never pointing a finger back at you, but then holding them to a standard of holding themselves accountable. It's not going to work like that. You've got to set that standard as well. But we need to make sure that both parties are willing to do this because show me a relationship where people don't take personal accountability and I will show you a toxic relationship. I will show you a miserable relationship. I will show you a relationship that will inevitably end. So you've got to make sure both people have to be willing to own mistakes, say my bad, acknowledge, okay, you know what? I could have done this better. That creates harmony in relationships that allows for things to be rectified and allows an environment where we can talk about things, fix them, and move on to better. The second red flag in dating you should never ignore is they talk very badly about their ex. Badly at all. It doesn't have to be very badly. They talk badly about their ex. This is a red flag. Now, some of y'all might be thinking, well, why? Like, you probably talk bad about your ex, so you might be a little triggered by this one. But let me explain to you why this is an issue, okay? One, it can go hand in hand with the per taking personal accountability because when people are talking about their past relationships and everything is about what the ex did wrong and they can never identify what they could have done better, that is 
a, a, a preview to what you're going to be dealing with in your own relationship with them, where they're going to always make it about you and never be willing to hold themselves accountable. That's number one. But the another part to that is if they're talking badly about their ex, chances are they have not healed from that relationship. Listen, you cannot show me someone who has healed and forgiven their ex, all right? And when we talk about forgiveness, understand that forgiveness is for you as an individual. It's about releasing that negative energy, not holding on to that hurt, pain, resentment, or negative emotions. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, you end up back with a person. It doesn't mean you're saying that situation or what they did was okay, but you released it, all right? So when someone has not released through forgiveness, when they have not gotten to a better place, all right, and this is showing in how negatively they talk about their, their past partner, this is a problem because this is a sign they have not healed. And if they have not healed, then what are they now bringing into the current potential relationship? So many relationships have failed or gone left because people have brought in previous baggage to this new person. And now you're dealing with things that aren't even your fault. You're having to sift through all the nonsense because of the damage someone else did. That isn't fair to you, it isn't healthy for either of you, and it's going to kill the relationship. So once you see that someone talks very badly about their ex, again, talk about it. Maybe they need some more, well, not even maybe, they do need some more healing. They need to get to a better place, and you want to make sure they find some peace because here's the other problem. Again, as I said, they bring in that past baggage, but also what happens is they become so easily triggered. So now, if you do anything that, that in any way resembles a behavior, a pattern that their ex did, even if it's not the, an actual connection, but to them it looks like it, they're going to get triggered. They're going to be on edge. And right there, again, they're going to hit you with things, not really because of what you're currently doing, but because of what they've already been through. And they're trying to do a preemptive strike. So now, again, they don't even want to go in that direction. So they hit you before you can hit them. That's how their mind is working. So again, it's such an unhealthy dynamic. So when they're speaking badly about their ex, you want to address that. And again, all these red flags I'm giving you, if it's you, then address it. Don't just look at this from the perspective of what the other person has to deal with. Make sure none of these things apply to you. And if they do, you need to correct it before you move forward in dating. Number three on the list of red flags in dating you should never ignore, they lie about the little things. Now, I, I chose specifically to say the little things because what I have seen in a lot of situations is this this uh, brushing off of the white lie. It's, it's not a big deal. It's a small lie here. It's a small lie there. But here's the thing. I've never met a person who consistently does white lies who doesn't give big lies, <laughs> okay? Like, this person doesn't keep it in the box of the small lie. It's not just in the box of the little, what they feel is a harmless lie. It extends past that. So again, it's one thing. I think, I think everyone on the face of this earth has told a quote-unquote white lie before, all right? So I understand that it's going to happen sometimes. But when you're noticing a consistent pattern and consistently lying about things that no lie was even necessary, not saying a lie is ever truly necessary, but when they're just choosing to lie about where well, you ask them, hey, where were you earlier, all right? And let's say they were hanging out with their friends and they could have just told you that. And they choose to lie about it. Like, little things like that, or, and, and that, that to some people might be a valid reason. Again, I'm not, I'm not making it okay. I'm just saying how people think, all right? But the point is, you understand what I'm talking about. There are these situations where it's like, why'd you lie? You didn't have to lie about that. It wasn't even a big deal to begin with. This is a warning sign. Because if they don't feel comfortable enough telling you the truth, in small moments, in insignificant situations, then imagine what they're gonna do in the bigger ones. Imagine what they're gonna do when there's a greater fear of how you will respond, when there's a greater significance to the outcome of the situation. Because again, understand that most lies are told because people are trying to dictate the outcome or they fear the outcome of telling you the truth. 
And so because they don't want that to happen, they tell you a lie. So again, if they're showing a struggle with the little things, they're more, more than certain going to do it in the bigger moments. So you have to address it and you have to nip it in the bud right away. You can't laugh it off. You can't brush it off. No, let's talk about it. Let's be honest. And again, let's create an, uh, an environment and a relationship where we can be honest about everything. I know that's very hard for a lot of people because so many individuals are not used to having a very transparent, honest relationship in, in any aspect of their life. But it's something that you have to establish at the very least in your romantic relationships, all right? At the very least with the person that you're trying to potentially share a life with. If you two can't be honest with each other, forget about it. It's going to be downhill from there. So you got to address those small lies when they lie about the little things. Number four on this list is they hang out with bad influences. So here's the thing. I've seen tons of situations where people are not paying attention to the circles that their potential partner is running in, all right? Now, granted, we, we want to evaluate individuals for who they are and what they show, all right? And I don't wanna put their circle, their friends, their family as a full representation of them, don't get me wrong. But you cannot ignore when your potential partner, when this person you're dating is rolling with negative influences or even in toxic family circles because it's, it's not about even that they're going to be necessarily toxic, but that toxic energy will pour into your relationship, whether it's through them because now they have to deal with this toxic family and they bring it to you or that family coming directly to you because you're dealing with their family member. But even going back to the influences, even on that level, Perfect example, if you are a woman, you're dating a man, and this man is surrounded by single friends. And again, I don't want you to simply jump to attack the single friends because not every single friend is a bad influence. But some friends, and hell, forget if they're single. They can be in relationships and still be bad influences. They can be trying to push this man to engage in inappropriate behavior because that's how they roll. And you got to pay attention to that. If that's the kind of guys he hangs around, again, address it. It doesn't mean immediately don't deal with him, but it has to be addressed. On the flip side, if you're a man and you're dating a woman and all she has is negative, bitter women around her, you've got to understand now that is a setup for problems because those women are more than likely going to contaminate her mind, contaminate her spirit with negativity. When anything goes wrong, hell, even when it doesn't go wrong, everything could be going great. And they're going to say, you sure he ain't doing something? <laughs> you, you sure he's as good as you think he is? They will immediately project their negative perceptions onto your partner because that's all they know. And misery loves company. So they're going to try to find a way to bring down that happiness. Even if it's not a conscious decision to do it, it almost by nature occurs, all right, because they're dwelling in that negativity. So again, as the individual who is dating the person who is either in a negative family circle or negative influences, friends, so on and so forth, you've got to identify that and you've got to make sure that one of the ways we address it is by creating safeguards. And one of the best safeguards to create is one great communication between you and your potential partner. Because if you guys can't talk or you guys have a gap in your communication, that leaves an opening for the negative influences to come in and contaminate the situation. But when you have two people who can talk about everything, who always sit down and address things with each other first before running to that, those friends, running to those family members, you have a stronger unit that can now withstand any of that negativity. And naturally, what will happen is that person will pull more away from those negative people if they're not going to change and be better. If they're going to keep trying to undermine the relationship, then they're going to see that there's no value in hanging out with them so much. But again, it's an issue that has to be addressed. It cannot be ignored because so many people have had their relationships ruined because of outside noise, outside influences. So you've got to address that red flag. Number six on this list of red flags and dating you should never ignore, 
how they treat other people. Now listen, I, I said it in the video before right now. I can't remember the name of the video. I apologize. But it, I mentioned that, you know, you can see, you can tell a lot about somebody. You can see a lot about them in how they treat other individuals. It's not even about how they treat you. Don't get me wrong. How they treat you is a higher priority, of course. But we cannot ignore how they treat other people because if they treat other people poorly, then chances are that is at some point going to seep into your relationship with them. Again, most people have not mastered this, I, I can treat everyone else like crap, but treat you amazingly consistently. All right. Initially, yes, I think it's possible. You, they may be able to go through an extended period of time where they keep you in this protective bubble and do everything great for you, but they're not that great with other individuals. It's possible, but it's highly unlikely. But again, even if they can sustain it initially, it will at some point break through the bubble at some point because it's a part of their character. And it's a character flaw that has to be addressed. And so they can't hide their true character from you forever. Yes, they can bring you their best representative, but people cannot hold that up for too long. So you have to pay attention yourself to how are they treating other individuals and, and, and really understand, okay, what's going on here? Why are you like this? Why do you view this as acceptable behavior? And express your concern with it. Again, you're addressing the issue. We're not just going to cut them off because especially the fact that they're, they're willing to show you that they're going to put their best foot forward with you, then I do believe that they deserve the opportunity to correct the outside issue of how they treat others and get to the bottom root of that problem. But if they're unwilling to correct it, if they're going to make excuses for it, whatever the case may be, then again, you cannot ignore it under the, the idea of where they treat me well. That's a problem. Because if they're really a good person at their core, then why they can't be good to other individuals? Why aren't they good to people in general? Again, we will all have our moments, but if they're consistently mistreating others, consistently disrespectful to others, or even if they treat people that they view as a lower status of, than them, they treat them in a very poor manner, that's a problem. And that needs to be corrected. So again, how they treat other people is definitely a red flag that you should not ignore and that needs to be addressed. And as I'm going with this list, if anything comes to mind, comment below. Let me know what are some red flags you think should be addressed. But this seventh one might surprise you. I don't know if anyone has talked about this, but it hit my spirit and I felt like I had to add it to the list. And number seven is, they have never been alone. So hear me out because again, some of y'all might be triggered because it's you I'm talking about. You have to remember I'm a coach. I have sat down and talked to tons of people. I, I've seen thousands of scenarios. I know how this whole thing goes. And I can tell you with pure confidence that one of the issues I have found to be consistent is individuals who don't know how to be alone. Now one, getting themselves in the wrong relationship, and I'll explain how that's a problem for you, all right, as well as not learning and healing that they can be better in their next relationship. So first, let's dissect the first part. They end up in the wrong relationship because, again, what happens is people who keep jumping from relationship to relationship and don't know how to be alone, they're trying to latch on to whatever they can. All right. And so they're not focused on, do we have a connection here? They're not focused on this really being where I belong. They're not focused on there being true alignment in this situation. They're just looking for the resume to be good enough and they will latch on to you. Now, if you're that person they're latching on to, you have to understand that it's problematic because they're not with you because they love you. They're with you because they need somebody in their life. They don't want to be by themselves. And so they will brush under the rug all the red flags themselves. And you, if you're not uh, moving forward with your eyes open, if you're not being aware, if you're not in tune, especially spiritually, then you are very likely to overlook it because this individual will, uh, they will, they will put their best, best foot forward in the sense of they're going to try to love you and do for you because, again, they need someone in their life. But when you really take a step back and look, you start to see that at their core of who they are, 
The connection's not really there, but they're holding on because they don't want to be by themselves. And you gotta understand that there's a deeper reason why you're even allowing them to remain in your life as long as they did. But I digress. Let's move to the next point of this. What I said was that when they keep jumping from relationship to relationship, they don't take time to learn how they can be better in their next relationship. Because again, people who don't like being alone and people who jump to the next relationship very quickly, they don't take time to heal and evaluate. All right. They're simply looking for the next warm body to have in their life. And this is a problem because they don't have any growth that occurs. So like I'll, I'll speak to clients and I'm like, hey, you need time by yourself because one, you need to detox from all these previous relationships and you also need time to reflect and learn what you need to be doing better because you are now pro- pro- uh, proceeding in life blinded by your fear of being alone, blinded by your lack of healing, blinded by the fact that you don't even know who you are. Because again, you're so used to having someone there. You never took time to learn yourself. You never took time to truly love yourself. Now again, I know I'm supposed to be talking to the people dealing with this individual, but I feel like I'm talking directly right now to the person who this applies to. You got to really ask yourself, do I know how to be alone? It doesn't mean you have to be happy to be single, but you do have to learn how to be happy while you're single. You do have to learn how to not be so dependent on having someone there that you will now accept the devil into your life just to have a person in your life. That's a problem. And this happens to so many people. So again, when someone going back to flipping it, when you're looking for the dating red flag, when you're dealing with someone who has never been alone, who's always in these relationships, you want to explore that deeper. And again, I never want you to make assumptions because though this is typically going to apply to those individuals as far as the lack of healing, the lack of evaluation, them not even truly being in love at that moment, they're just latching on, you want to just, you want to be fair in in allowing them to show you does this apply to them specifically as well? And what have they done to counter those issues? Have they somewhere done a process of evaluation, maybe while they were even in a relationship that has shown growth? How have they progressed in life from those previous relationships to now? Are we seeing that evolution in who they are or are they still the same person? All right. Have they truly healed and released that baggage? Have they forgiven? Can they talk about their past relationships without it being all negative and hurtful? You want to address all these things. Now, if all those issues are covered and we're good, all right, cool. We won't hold that against them any kind of way. But again, if we dive deeper and we realize all of this does apply, then you got to take a step back. It's not time to be in that relationship. And let me just throw this out there real quick. And I'll do a whole other video about this because this is a deep topic. Sometimes it's the right person, wrong time. I know some of y'all don't believe in that, but it's real. It's real. Sometimes you will meet the person who there may even be a deep connection with, but they are not ready because they have some issues they have to address. They have not healed. There could be a a, a variety of things going on, as well as you're not as ready as you think you are. All right. And so we have to understand that, yes, again, red flags don't always mean wrong person. It may mean wrong person or it may mean wrong time. Either way, it has to be addressed and corrected before we can move forward so that we can have a healthy and successful relationship. I need you to understand these five very important questions you need to ask yourself before you start dating. My name is Stefan Laboussier, aka Stefan Speaks, your certified relationship and dating coach here to provide you with dating and relationship advice. This is going to be for the men and the women. And again, it's going to be the five questions to ask before you start dating. Now, before we begin, as always, be sure to like this video, share it, subscribe to this channel and comment below. Give me your feedback. What's the question you think you should ask? Now, listen, I know you might be thinking, are these questions to ask them? No, no, no. These are questions to ask yourself. Because I need to make sure that before you jump into the dating pool, or if you have already, that you're well equipped to get the best results possible. And a lot of people are overlooking certain steps 
who are undermining themselves with negative or improper mindsets that aren't going to allow them to see the best out of their experience or actually get with someone who they can have an amazing relationship with. So it's very important that we do our due diligence before we step back out there and start to expose ourselves to the world of dating and relationships. So again, with no further ado, let's get right into it. Five questions to ask yourself before you start dating. Question number one, do you believe good men or good women exist? Here's why this question is, ex is extremely important. If you have the mentality that there are no good men or there are no good women, then you are almost without a doubt going to end up with a bad man or a bad woman. You're going to almost without a doubt end up in a toxic relationship. Because if your mind is telling you that good does not exist and you're going to enter into the dating pool, then you're going to entertain and engage with mediocre, bad, and toxic. Because to you, there's no better than this. To you, I might as well accept this nonsense because there's only other nonsense waiting for me out there. You have to make sure you believe the good even exists in this world. This is going to help guard you or keep you away from entertaining people you should not entertain. And I see it happen all the time. I see it happen with people who are currently in a relationship where they rationalize staying in this bad relationship because they don't believe good relationships exist. They don't believe they can actually find better. So why leave what I know for something new that's going to be just as toxic and damaging? But that's the wrong mindset. There are great men out there. There are great women out there. The crazy thing is a lot of people just don't recognize good when they see it. And unfortunately, that's because a lot of people have been hurt, have not healed from their past, and essentially that, that brokenness does not allow them to embrace the good when it's in front of them. And so what can happen in a lot of dating experiences is that when you actually meet someone who is good and great, you don't believe it. You're questioning everything about them. They're too good to be true. And before you know it, you will sabotage the situation and undermine your ability to actually have a successful relationship with them. And you will, almost without a doubt, go run to someone else who is toxic because it's actually safer there emotionally because you know the negative that they're putting out and you're expecting that negative. When you think only negative exists, but someone is showing you good, you swear they're setting you up for something really bad. So instead, you become much more anxious and, and, and much more uh, uncomfortable in that situation and safer in the toxic situation. I do not want that for you. So you need to make sure that you change that mindset first and you believe that good men and women exist before you start dating. The second question to ask before you start dating is, can I make time for them? So here's the other, one of the other issues I'm noticing with so many people. They say they want a relationship, they want that person in their life, but when you actually look at their life, there is really no time and room for that person, at least not in a way that allows you to pour into that person's needs and make sure that you're available for them when they need you. What you're actually looking for is someone to fit into your life and be convenient to you. What you're looking for is for them to make sure they meet your needs, but you're overlooking the effort you will have to put forth for them. And that is a recipe for disaster every single time. Now, listen, I understand we all get lonely. We all want someone there, but we have to ask ourselves, can we make time for them? Can we be flexible for them? We cannot just expect them to be flexible for us. We cannot just expect them to be convenient to us. Can we work with them and create an environment where we're both getting what we need? And if we cannot at this moment, then stop. Do not move forward with trying to date. Move forward with trying to create better life balance. Try to create room for someone. Now, you may say, well, listen, I'll create the room when I find someone to put in it. You can't do it like that because the reality is that if you wait for that time, by the time they appear, you'll be scrambling trying to make it work and you may not know how to. You may be too deep in the hole to pull yourself out of it. The best thing for you to do is create time now. And even if that time is not filled by a romantic partner, let that time be filled with 
me time. Let that time be filled with hobbies and, and passions and pursuits and things that you can enjoy in life. Let that time be filled with relaxation and rest because you need it. All right. And hell, you're going to need it even when you find them. So you, you still need to create room for that regardless. But at the very least, if you create time and balance in your life now that you can now give to the things that make you happy, when someone that you meet that makes you happy or adds to your happiness, because you got to make yourself happy first, when someone you meet adds to your happiness comes along, now they can slide right in smooth transition. We don't have any problems. We already have a structure to our life that allows us to have the proper balance to pour into our relationships, to pour into ourselves, as well as our careers and anything else we have going on. So make sure you ask yourself, do I have time to give them and this relationship that I desire? The third question to ask yourself before you start dating is, do you believe in real love? So this kind of goes hand in hand with number one in believing good men and women exist in the sense that if you don't believe in real love, in genuine love, then you will accept things that are falling way short of that. You will accept things that may look like love, infatuation, attachment, unhealthy attachment to be specific, all right, uh, uh, even obsession in some, in some situations. But you will fall short of genuine love because you're not believing it exists. And so you will replace that with these toxic things that will only create more problems in your life. So again, you have to make sure that if you want positive results, if you want to make sure you end up in the right relationships and healthy, successful relationships, you have to believe in actual genuine love. You have to believe in positive healthy relationships. And I know it's a struggle for a lot of people because many of you have never seen that in your life. Many of you have no proper examples of healthy relationships. And I would encourage you to go research these things. Hell, if you got to look at documentaries on love, if you got to watch TV shows that interview different people, couples who genuinely love each other, whatever you can do to start creating uh, that positive image in your mind and start believing it's out there, I need you to set that foundation first before you start dating. Because again, without it, you will accept the, the imitations. You will accept the things that are actually unhealthy attachments and will only wreak havoc in your life. So make sure you have that foundation there. And I feel the need to mention this for those of you who are believers, you know, I'm a firm believer that God is love, all right? And so if you believe God and you believe that God wants the best for you, then know that God wants you to have genuine, real love in your life. And so you have to include God in the process of your dating. Again, this is a side note for those who do believe. You've got to understand that you can't include God in work, in health, but when it comes to relationships, nah, Lord, I'll take care of it myself. Like, we can't do that. You've got to make sure he's included in all aspects of your life because that, again, sets the proper foundation for success in your relationships and ensuring that you end up with the right person and not the wrong one. So now to piggyback off that, number four, the, the fourth question to ask yourself before dating is, do you love yourself? Do you truly love yourself? The last thing I want any of you to do is to try to start dating when you don't have a foundation of self-love in your life. Because again, if you notice, everything I'm mentioning on this list is, is about ensuring that you have the foundation that allows you to end up in healthy, successful relationships. Because when you overlook these things, you will almost without a doubt end up in the wrong relationship. So when you don't have a healthy level of self-love, you are going to tolerate people who don't truly love you. You are going to tolerate people who mistreat you. You are going to accept less than you deserve. And that's the last thing I want for any of you. So you've got to make sure you truly love you. Now understand this, loving you doesn't simply mean I love who I am, flaws and all, and I'm good. Yes, that's a piece of the puzzle to a certain extent. 
But loving you also means I want to bring the best out of me. I want to make sure I'm operating at my highest level. I'm reaching for my highest potential. Doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. Doesn't mean there's not going to always be room for improvement. What it means is that you are striving to be your best you and that you are trying to bring your, bring your best you to the table when you are dating, which again will increase your ability to receive the person who's truly best for you. So do not accept uh, mediocrity in, in, in areas that need to be improved. Do not make excuses for your flaws out of the name of, well, I love myself just how I am. If you love yourself, you want to give yourself the best. You want to give yourself a higher level, uh, a higher quality of life. And that means working and addressing those issues. That means taking care of, taking better care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally. That means making sure that you're not holding on to negative energy. All of these things encompass you truly loving yourself and embracing what you truly deserve. But not just loving yourself, know yourself. Because again, the mistakes so many people make before they start dating or when they start to date and get in these relationships is they don't know who the hell they are. And if you don't know who you are, how do you know who belongs in your life? How do you know who you truly match with? How do you know what's truly best for you? You won't. You won't. And by the time you figure it out, while you're already in this relationship, you're going to wake up one day and say, what the hell am I doing? How did I end up here? Why am I with this person? All right. We don't need that to be the case. We need to nip that in the bud from the beginning. So the quicker you can learn yourself and, and get a good handle of who you are, what you need, what makes you happy and what you are willing to provide in a relationship. Because please understand, again, Relationships aren't just about what we're going to receive. It's about what we're willing to give. And so you have to understand what, where do you draw your line? What are you unwilling to do? So if you meet a person that you may really like, but they may say, well, listen, I want this, 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 and this. And if you know that you're not that person that can give those things, all right, then we can say, okay, you know what? We're just not a good match. It's not a good fit. It happens. We keep it moving. Rather than trying to make it work with someone it'll never work with. And that's what happens to so many people because they don't truly know themselves and they don't truly love themselves. So be sure you have checked that off your list and you have that covered before you start dating. And now the fifth question to ask yourself before you start dating is, have I healed and released my baggage? Listen. I know some of y'all are already thinking, you probably see my face right now, you're already thinking, well, everyone has issues. We all got problems. Listen, everyone has gone through some things. Everyone at some point or another has had some issues. Not everyone right now is holding on to their issues. People have healed. People have grown. People have become better. So do not use that as an excuse. Do not let that be your scapegoat. You need to look yourself in the mirror and address any lingering issues. You need to release that baggage and make sure you're not projecting past negative outcomes onto your present, onto your future. You're not holding this new person responsible for something they have nothing to deal with. do with. All right? It wasn't their fault. But you're bringing it to them because you have not released it from your past. And now you are sabotaging your ability to have successful dating and relationships. So it is important that you take responsibility, men and women, to heal. Go to a counselor. Go to a coach. Do what is necessary. Get my book, Love After Heartbreak. I had to throw it in because it just, you know, it just makes sense. Get the book Love After Heartbreak. I have the link in the description of the comments section. It gives you the steps to healing. Do what you need to do, but do not make excuses for your baggage. Also understand this. Even if you want to believe without a, with all your heart that everyone is walking around with some kind of issue, well then I would still counter that by saying not everyone's issue is going to be detrimental to a relationship. So basically, it's one thing where some people may have an issue with procrastination, but that procrastination is not going to destroy the relationship with the person that they would end up with. However, someone else may have an issue that stems from their childhood that will, without a doubt, directly impact their relationship or directly impact their ability to be with the right person and increase the chances of them being with the wrong person. 
So again, sometimes these issues aren't about just how they affect us within the relationship. It's how they affect us in who we choose, who we allow ourselves to entertain, how we may become so accustomed to dysfunction that we will only choose dysfunctional people to be with. This is what happens to so many individuals. So you've got to make sure you address these things for your own sake first and foremost, but yes, for the sake of any potential relationship that you're going to be in. So that you can live life at a higher level. Let's get real simple with this first off. I think there's, I think everyone on the face of this earth has at one point been attracted to someone that was not good for them or was not truly best for them. Because let's face it, we're going to meet tons of people in this lifetime, but they're not all for us, all right? The reality is that the majority of people we meet are quote unquote wrong for us. Now, there's a difference between being attracted to people who are not truly best for us or we're not a good fit with and constantly being attracted to damaged, toxic, broken people. And I'll explain a little bit more of that as we go along. But the point is, simply being attracted to someone that it's not going to work out with is normal. So the first thing I need you to understand is stop beating yourself up. It's understandable. It happens to everyone. We, we all see different things that we like. It might be physical attraction. It might be uh, we admire certain things about them. Hell, even when we're not focusing on the exterior or their resume, so to speak, you have some situations where people truly fell for that person's spirit, their energy, their personality, and they were still wrong for you. And that makes it real frustrating because you're like, dang, I thought maybe if I did it or if I looked past the surface, that that might serve me well. No, that doesn't necessarily fix anything. I mean, don't get me wrong. We need to be focused on what is going on under the hood, so to speak, but that isn't the cure all to this. Because again, the reality is that you're going to meet tons of people in your life and you're gonna be attracted to them. Now, granted, I will say that if you're noticing a pattern of always being attracted to individuals who not only, not only are not good for you, but they're just flat out bad for you, all right? Now we can start examining things on a deeper level. So for example, one of the reasons why you might be continuously attracted to the wrong person is because you are too focused on looks. Now, do not get me wrong. I believe attraction matters. I believe trying to have a romantic relationship without physical attraction is asking for trouble, all right? However, we don't want to make looks uh, our relationship God, so to speak. We don't want to put it on such a high of a pedestal to where we will now become blind to the other issues that they are presenting. That we will become blind to the red flags because we're so caught up in how good they look. So we have to have this balance of, yes, let there be attraction. I am not going to encourage or push you to date people that you are not attracted to, all right? But I'm going to encourage you to not get caught up with people simply because you're attracted to them. You've got to still be aware of the, the person that you're dealing with. And when you see the issues, you know what I say, when you see the red flags, you address them. If they can't be corrected, you keep it moving. Another general reason why you may be continuously picking the wrong person is because of you're being too focused on the resume. So let's go past looks right now. The resume is, oh man, they, they have no kids, if that's your thing, I'm just giving an example. They have no kids, they look good, they make this kind of money, uh, they, they graduated from this college, whatever the case may be. They have a resume that it shows them in a great light. And you get caught up in the resume. You get all hype about what you're seeing on the surface, but again, You've done it to the point where you're ignoring or you're becoming blind to the character of the person, all right? And so you've got to be mindful of, again, having enough awareness that the resume does not fool you. The resume may open the door. The resume may allow you to say, you know what, there's potential here or, you know, we have a, a, a solid prospect in front of us. But you do not allow that 
to blind you to the point where now you will try to make it happen with this person because you want all these qualities or this these things on their resume that they're portraying. That is where we get into trouble. So you've got to be mindful of that and take a step back, especially if that has been a reoccurring pattern for you. Because so many people are choosing based off of the resume and they're not being more aware of the character. They're not being more aware of the spirit, the connection that needs to be there, the deeper things that need to be at play because you could get everything you want. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to say that full, that full statement. I'm going to keep that statement for the very end. All right. So let's just move along. So again, you got to look past the resume. Now, here's another reason why you might keep continuously being attracted to the wrong person. Because you love to date for potential. Yeah, I said it. You have this mentality that I'm, I'm going to look for that diamond in the rough that I can mold or build up or they just need a little fire, a little, a little uh, help, a little push, and I'm going to get them there. And there's really other reasons why you keep dating for potential. But the point is... So many relationships like this, where you're, you're focused on the potential of the person, ends up being a very damaging, destructive, toxic relationship. And a lot of times, it's that fire, seeing their potential, and I'm not saying all the time, there are some situations that have fortunately worked out, but for a lot of people, it doesn't because it's, you have to understand the deeper reasons why you are doing it. And so what, what I feel the need to mention right now is that a lot of times this dating potential or this dating someone that you know isn't where they need to be yet to have a successful relationship with them, or at least you're not aware of that completely, sets, sets it up for the whole codependent narcissistic dynamic, all right? A lot of times you're getting with this person who essentially needs you, all right? And the reality is that you do this because it provides you with a level of security. It makes you feel more valued in the relationship. It makes you feel like they've got to be happy they got someone like you, so they're going to be more likely to be loyal, more likely to uh, pour into your needs. You, 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 you feel safer there emotionally. And this can happen with men and women, okay? Bottom line. But then because it's a, a dynamic where you got to give, 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 give. And initially you're okay because, again, you view it as I just need to help them out. They got potential, blah, blah, blah. It ends up being a situation where they keep taking and taking and taking. And now you're drained. And now your eyes open. You're like, oh, my God, they're a narcissist. But, oh, my gosh, you're codependent. Oh, my gosh, you got into this because you thought it was going to be safer. Oh, my gosh, you got into this because you haven't healed. Which brings me to another point. The reason why you keep uh, uh, being attracted to the wrong person is because there are parts of you that you have not healed that are drawn to these types of individuals. If you have grown up in dysfunction, you will be drawn to dysfunction if you have not healed and resolved that. All right? If, if, if there's issues with your father, you might be trying to replace him. Same thing with men who have, uh, did not have their mothers or issues with their mothers. There's all kinds of trauma-related issues that now creates trauma bonds in relationships, that now creates dynamics where you will allow yourself to deal with something you know isn't best for you, but you have normalized this toxic behavior for various reasons. You have developed an unhealthy attachment to these individuals because, again, you have not healed. So the source of any kind of relationship where you entertain toxic behavior, where you entertain damaging, uh, dysfunctional behavior is a lack of healing. I, can, I have never in my time doing this, all my years being a coach and speaking about relationships and writing books, I have never met someone who found themselves in this relationship, who did not have something very specific they needed to heal from, if not multiple things. And yes, a lot of times it stems from childhood. And that childhood trauma continues on into their adult life, into their relationships, and now creates this dynamic where you keep being drawn or attracted to the wrong people. And the other reason I kind of mentioned it earlier is because the dysfunctional toxic person feels safer emotionally than the healthy one. Because with the toxic individual, you actually feel more at home. 
You also feel like, again, it's safer emotionally because you don't truly feel vulnerable with this individual. They're showing you all their negative traits out front. You know what you're getting yourself into. And if your mindset is, well, the world is just one big negative place, this place filled with men and women who want to hurt me, well, it's easier to be with the person who you already know what their issues are. But when you meet that healthy, loving person who wants to give you the world, you're like, what's the deal here? What's really going on? You can't trust it. You can't believe it. You question everything about it. You will self-sabotage before you allow yourself to be with that person. It does not feel safe being with them emotionally because now you feel vulnerable. And now you will be expected to step up to the plate in a way that requires more emotional maturity, in a way that requires you to heal, in a way that requires you to be vulnerable. And if you're not ready to face the issues that have created this, this fear of vulnerability in you, you're not going to be able to be with this person. So you will run from the right one and you will run to the wrong one. And this contributes to this ongoing cycle of why you are continuously attracted to the wrong person. But remember I said earlier I had a statement, I had to cut it halfway through. The other reason why you're constantly attracted to the wrong person is because you're focused on what you want and not what you need. At the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with wanting what you want, but you've got to not allow that to, uh, to blind you from what is actually necessary and needed in your life. And there are many people out there who got exactly what they wanted and still weren't happy. They got exactly what they wanted and were still miserable in that relationship. And it still failed them because what you want is not what you need. And in order for you to understand what you need, you need time alone. You need time to get to know yourself. You need time to love yourself. You need to heal because that lack of healing is blinding you from, from what's necessary in your life. Now, I got to also add in there, connect with God. Your relationship with God will help you in, in fortifying the foundation of what is needed and necessary in your life. Now, again, it doesn't mean you're going to end up with some person that doesn't have anything you wanted and it's like, I just got to deal with this because it, 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 it's what someone claimed you needed. No, nah, like, no, I don't want this to sound like discouraging in that way. I want you to know that what you need is going to be what makes you happy. It's going to be what, what makes you feel like you're at peace and you're in the right relationship. What you need is going to fulfill you. What you need is going to give you a life of greater purpose and joy. So trust and believe what you need is best. And God knows what you need, but you, you know what you want. And we've got to make sure we're not letting that get in the way. Because it is definitely another contributing factor to why you are continuously attracted to the wrong person. But again, like I said in the beginning, we have to understand we are going to meet people who we are attracted to who are wrong for us for various reasons. That is life. So the key here, the key to all of this is not that you are attracted to the wrong person, but do you entertain them? And if you are always entertaining the wrong person, then yes, we have a huge, huge problem. Don't get me wrong. The attraction part, it, it still is a problem that needs to be addressed. But because we're going to have that dynamic to some degree in everyone's life, the bigger part is the entertaining. And you got to learn to stop entertaining the wrong people. Stop allowing the wrong individuals to linger in your life. Stop trying to make a relationship work that never belonged in your life to begin with. Stop trying to be with this person that you know, you, 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 you're not even in them like that. You have an unhealthy connection or attachment with this individual, not connection, that was a slip up. You have an unhealthy attachment with that individual. And you have to recognize these things. And when you can learn to stop entertaining the wrong people, now you make room to receive the right one. Now you can be available for that great relationship. Now you can make more time for yourself. Now you can make more time for healing. Now you can make more time for finding your purpose and walking in it. Stop entertaining the wrong people. And when you do that, you will set yourself up for hey, greater success. Hey, thank you success. for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here, and I'll see you there. Anybody can do a good thing here or say a nice thing there, but love a man who's serious about you? 
is gonna be a man who strives to be consistent in his actions. Not just strives, he just will be. 